Welcome to another tutorial. This time I'm going to be using Blender to make a very simple object with two materials and I'm going to export that using the FBX format and I'm going to load that up into XPacker and transfer it into Racetrack Builder, finally. Um, I'm not a very good modeler, which is why I created a program for doing modeling. Um, so anything I do in Blender can probably be done 10 times better by somebody that knows what they're doing. But anyway, it's going to be enough to show you what we need to do to get an object into RTB, which is the point. So I'm going to scale this by 3. It's a basic cube that we get. And I'm going to build a little house. So I'll raise that up. You want these... Oops. Uh, raise that up again. You want these points to be above the, the ground because this is where the base of our house is going to be. You don't want the base being three metres below ground. Um, and I'm going to subdivide this, Control R, and we'll move that up to about there. And then we'll grab all these top points. As you can see, I'm very slow to do this because I'm not very good. Um, Deselect those, box those, merge those points, and my modelling um, is probably, you know, not the greatest either. But um, that kind of resembles something like a house, which was the whole point. Let's switch into faces mode now, and we're going to create a few materials. Firstly, the roof. Um, so I go to the materials here and I'm going to create a brand new material for this and then we're going to select a texture create a new texture open from our existing spots roof tiles this is just something I grabbed off the internet it's not very good it doesn't really repeat too well uh, vertically or at all but it's enough to give you the idea all right We'll select the inverse of the faces, so we've got all the other faces selected now, and we'll create a new material. Um, so I come up here again, create new, go to the texture, new texture to apply to that material, open back to here. Here's one I ripped out of a old BTB uh, X pack, and uh, so we'll re reuse that for this purpose. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think that should be assigned. Um, the last thing I want to do is get rid of this material. I, I didn't use it. I could have reused it, but um, I like the way it starts at 001 and continues like that. Um, so now if we switch into material mode, we'll start to get an idea. We've got some brownish looking bits, uh, and it's very dark around here, so the, the best way I've found to do this is just to create a few points of light around the place um, so that you get your object lit from all sides um, and I'm sure there was probably a better way of doing this but that'll do we just want to see it brighter um, now it's still all brown which means our UV mapping um, probably needs to be worked upon so for starters I'm going to switch to the front mode orthogonal and press U for uh, mapping and we're going to do a cylinder map on that um, now actually I want to apply that there we go um, that's assigned that material to the faces that were selected um, I'm going to go back to this one press A to deselect everything and select there should give me those faces yes it did now UV mapping here I will switch to top view here I'm gonna struggle let's just go with a unwrap there oh it didn't do too bad a job um, we can go into UV editing and I'm not very good here but if I grab all of those and if I scale them let's see if we can get this to work go into material we might actually see this in real time if I scale here go the other way there we go. That's actually better than I expected it was going to work out. I'm not very good at doing this, um, so search the interweb for, for better examples. But that's good enough for me. That's our object. I'll save that off and we'll export that 
if I can click the right one. Export out to FBX. Um, just the, the mesh will do as house FBX. And now we'll load up Xpacker and take a look at um, how we can load it in there and then export it out to RTB. Okay, so we've got our object there and now it's time to create an Xpack to load this object into. Um, it's really complicated, not. Um, scale by 0 0.1. A lot of the models uh, multiplied by 100 when they're exported. I don't know why I can't figure this one out, um, but I've got an option now here that we can scale it back down. Um, so that's done. Your house is there. You could export this now out to RTB and start using it, but we're just going to do a couple of things. Um, we've got the materials there, the textures there, but the, the naming of these could be done a little bit better, so I want to just briefly touch on that. Um, these roof tiles could be used by many models, so you might want to just change this to roof um, and save that off. And this one's uh, named a little bit strangely, um, and, and well for the X-Pack it was fine. Um, for here I'm going to change it to brick wall, and we'll do the same there, brick wall 001. Um, and just save that off. So we might be able to reuse these textures in different materials and we might be able to use materials again for more than just houses. So we'll just do the same sort of naming convention. I'm just going to copy and paste it there and save that off. And, and that's actually changing where these exist on your hard drive. So under the XPacker XPack folder um, you'll find that this is actually changing when we change the path up here it changes the name of the XML file that gets created and creates a folder called brick wall for us as well. Um, we could go into here and change some other properties um, in fact let's let's just um, change the brick wall so that we've got more than just a diffuse texture. Let's go with diffuse and uh, normal texture. So I'm going to load that up um, from one I created before and we'll just save that off. Oh, don't you hate these things? Go away. I'm going to kill you. Um, not really. Uh, so we've got um, that pretty much done. Uh, we just need to organize these a little bit better if we're going to have many houses. Uh, we might want to change the path there. Um, we might want to have a LOD, level of detail in and out, so it disappears after about say 600 meters. Um, and most of these aren't really used now, um, some of them will be, but I'll touch on these in other tutorials. Um, some aren't used, they're leftovers from BTB, but I'm keeping them around because I do expect to use them in the future. The most important one to have it appear in RTB is this property here, the group, and um, in RTB, and I'll show you later, um, there's the list box where we, we narrow down which objects we want to look at, and this determines what appears in that list box. Um, the other things, randomness, I wouldn't really put on houses, you could put a little bit of randomness there if you wanted default randomness to be um, changing your object. This is for complicated or uh, complex objects, I won't touch on that, ignore that for now. These, don't use these unless you know what you're doing. Um, again, I'll, I'll maybe do a, a, another tutorial on those things. This gives you a little bit of information about your house that you created. Um, so, we'll save that off, and now we'll zip that into ITB. Goes and creates the uh, X-Pack and we'll go look at RTB now. Okay, so we want to load that up into a project, so we'll just create a project now. Go to Edit, x -Packs. click on the new x -Pack. click OK, go to here. Now we've got our houses. We haven't got an icon for it, we should um, go and add an icon. If we're in Xpacker, you could do it there, load an icon. Um, it's just a JPEG file and we click and we've got our house. Look at that. Doesn't look beautiful. Okay, the mapping does need to be improved, the shape and um, yeah, interest in that could be um, 
done better. But um, one important thing I wanted to point out is why would we have two materials? Uh, why not just have one material? If we look at our um, buildings recently, uh, these buildings were all done with one material. So um, that's just one one texture. There's uh, another texture for a low detailed version of it when you're further away. But uh, effectively that's done with one texture and this is done with two. The difference is subtle but it does allow you to do different things. If I were to change the properties of the material of there, it affects everything. So if I make the building more specu specular, the bricks more specular, everything is going to be more, more specular. So if I change this for instance, firstly we've got this, the walls are done with a, a normal mapping whereas the roof is not. If we look at the roof it's diffuse only. Um, and secondly we can do things like change the specular properties there so we can make that roof very specular and it's not affecting the bricks so the bricks are actually a different material um, if we were to make the the bricks specular um, it would affect the other the way around so um, you know it, it allows you a little bit more control over the differences between the materials in, in your objects by having two materials um, and um, that just gives you greater artistic control. Um, in the next tutorial I'll, I'll build a second house and we'll just um, organize our materials a little bit and I'll just give you a few tips over that. All right, hope you've enjoyed that and um, sorry my, my building skills aren't, aren't great but hopefully yours are. Thanks for watching.